Yeah, I think he just said help. But luckily, Jamie is trained for this. He's not going to fish another Chinese boy out of a pool, okay? And also, Jamie was so confused because he's like, why is that guy yelling out more Kobe Calais songs? <coughs> help. I need somebody. Help. Not just anybody. Is that a Colby Callier song? <laughs> Thanks. Back in the USSR, is that Colby Callier? Hi, hello, and welcome aboard to another brand spanking new episode of another podcast network presents the Patreon exclusive recap of Peacock's Below Deck Dan Anda. I'm Dylan Saddled Up. Next one, Real Nicholas Davis. Ahoy, matey. Pat Producer of the podcast is over there behind my glasses. Permission to come aboard. Permission granted. Uh, how are you guys? Doing pretty good. Nick gave us some good news today. What's up? Well, they're going to have another, uh, they're going to do another one of these deals where they have uh, two, two, uh, two below deck shows running simultaneously, which means ka-ching, because uh, <laughs> one of those, of course, I will be doing for free, right? and the other will stay behind this nice little wall that you need to pay to come, uh, come through. Yeah, and I think everybody who is listening to this is really thrilled because they get to be a part of that party exactly. know, for $5 so, or $10 a in, month. In other words... Those who can hear the sound of my voice right now, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sh shout out to Peacock and Bravo for helping us build that wall. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a straight run. Build oh, that wall. Oh, you guys do build doing, that wall. Are you guys doing a political thing? Well, I don't even know where that would have came from. Where would you? Why? Where do you get that? Uh, We're talking about Patreon and people uh, having to pay us. Right. You know, speaking <laughs> of YouTube being bigoted towards uh, Hispanics, I had such an incredible Uber ride here today. Anybody could build the wall. This young lady named Anna and me just spoke for the entire time about farm animals, what real birria is, the kind of chiles they use in Guerrero. I mean, it was just <laughs> so beautiful. I heard Tear him. down that wall. Let them all in. I heard him. I agree. <laughs> recapping that conversation with his Uber driver to his wife. I was like, look at Dylan. Uh, something he would scoff at me for, but just getting a really educational, entertaining conversation with your driver. Listen, Are you going to de delve into it on APS? No, no, no. I thought I'll forget about it because I'm bad at writing down things and I've had a lack of commitment to another podcast. You ever get in an lately. argument with an Uber driver? Like over something that you disagree with that they did? Um, What, like the Turks aren't that bad? What are you talking about? Oh, uh, one time uh, I got uh, in an argument about an Uber driver and she was telling, you know, because they, you know, they used to talk a lot more, I think, Uber drivers, you know? Sure. And she started telling me how uh, she was pissed off uh, that the person that was renting her the uh, the house or guest house or something like that said she had six months and then she uh, needed to find her own place. And I said, what if you owned a place? <laughs> right. I think she felt she was going to hear a kind ear that yeah, had, yeah, yeah. Uh, agreed to her plight. Right. I was like, if, yeah, if you own the property, you have the right to say. She would have heard a... Uh Kind words from me. No way I'm getting into that muck. I'd have been like, yeah, I can't believe that. <laughs> is this you should APS? feel so vindicated. <laughs> yeah. No, it is not APS. But before we get into Below Deck, I do want to get a public service announcement out of the way. How are we feeling about the Calamansi lime agave sparkling? Oh, so Dylan seltzers. brought in some really snobby claw just to throw it in Nick and I's face because we drink that <laughs> panther piss. <laughs> And uh, you know what? I appreciate it. I know it's your attempt to belittle me, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. I enjoy, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Of course so you are. Perhaps yeah. the point is taken, but I'm not nearly offended by your uh, oh, by your gesture as you were hoping it would be. Oh, it's good, but I I am pretty sure we give uh, Dylan a day and uh, we blindfold and we stick a Mike's heart in his hand and he doesn't know the fucking difference. That's what I'm tasting out right here. I uh, welcome <laughs> that test. I, he's gonna get you on that. This there. There is a uh, quite a difference between this and that, <laughs> that garbage that we uh, yeah. that swill that we uh, sit, suck right out. now. You have a heifer's palate, so that's why you think I couldn't be able to tell the difference. Well, I, was that right, English? I could tell the difference too. You know what this tastes like, Dylan? Calamansi it, it, lime and that's what seltzers are supposed to most are meant to mimic something. This is just a beautiful 
simple would be if you had a really nice tequila and some fresh uh, lime juice just squeezed in that puppy. Isn't that stunning? Oh. They also have a... Uh, Where would you get the carbonation in the drink you just described? A little Splash seltzer. Of seltzer. Yeah, yeah, a little seltzer. Um, $20 for four bottles. Is that too much? It's pretty outrageous. Yeah, it's California. Oh, they also are uh, 12. Well, are they, those are 12. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. It's not that bad, right? I it's mean, five bucks a, a drink. Five bucks a drink. What do you think they pay? You pay for a Bud Light at Laurel Tavern, seven dollars. Yeah, and you pay seventy four dollars at Dodger Stadium. Yes. Did you ever see that thing where they have a media? Is this another podcast? Sorry, <laughs> I don't know what to talk about with Down Under. Honestly, uh, did you ever see that fucking bullshit that they're pulling at Dodger Stadium with the medium and large cup? The way they're shaped. They hold exactly the same amount of liquor. It's just the larger one looks like it holds. Dodger one. Stadium has gone to hell in a handbasket. I, th- I think that's the right expression. But And this guy doesn't want the wall. <laughs> well, listen, when I'm at Dodger Stadium and I see chamoy on everything, I, you know, I'm like, what is... Let's build that... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But, I am too. But no, it's, it's, it's nuts that the... You know, they have so many Jews at that ballpark, oh, and sure. it comes from Brooklyn, and they've gotten rid of the all-beef Dodger <coughs> dog. I honestly think it's anti-Semitic, and I think there should be a protest. Mm-hmm. But let's get into <laughs> Peacocks Below Deck Down Under uh, and Thoughts and Pots. Nick, why don't you go first? Me and Pat have been jabbing away. Oh, also, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hot tonight. Uh, Peacock, don't think you don't notice. They stole our title. Oh, right. Uh, did you say Did you say stole? No, I said stole. All right, I, I it was a hard breath. Okay, but it, it was like it was like stole. Yeah, uh, our title. Yeah, uh, Benny and the Jet Skis. Uh, right. I mean, exactly verbatim. It, they stole it, and it, it, it's pretty sickening. It was a much bigger deal with the Jet Skis last time. Uh, mm. I mean, I mean, he wasn't even on a jet ski this time. He was on a jet ski last, last time. time. There are so many different titles um, that they could have come up with for this episode. Mm-hmm. That's Intellectual property theft and laziness, honestly. It, and imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, so I'll take it a little bit. I I would even say just keep doing it. Like I I I do enjoy seeing my thoughts on screen, even if I'm not compensated. And the bigger case I can build up, then I can sue you eventually for right. the IP theft. You sons of bitches. You mm. sons of and bitches. That's peacock knock bravo. So All zero right, pots. Uh. <clears throat> It was an okay episode, 85 Pots. 85 Pots, Pat. Uh, It was the worst episode of the season. Uh, Nothing really happened on this goddamn uh, episode. Uh, Yeah, I got, uh, I don't know. I guess you guys are going to have to jibber-jabber for about 45 on this one. that's encouraging. I've got 10 knots. 10 knots, huh? Yeah. Um, I actually found it to be kind of a, a fun episode. Oh. Uh, I, I had a lot to say, um, a lot of little bubbling instances of hatred for me. And you know how we love to hate when we watch reality television, but, uh, Benny and Magda, I, you know, I don't want to sound like a boomer because I'm not a boomer. I'm a millennial, but I genuinely do not understand why there's an entire generation of us that needs positive reinforcement in career environments i mean every once in a while you need it but it, it's just f- fucking wild and infuriating to mm-hmm. me it's it's like jamie's making up incompetencies benny you were pulling a james bond you were taking selfies off of an uh, the the edge of an unmanned vehicle you're an insane person it's it's just like uh joe rogan was telling god sad i don't want you taking your mental health day okay mm-hmm. uh if your mother didn't die get your ass to work and work sure that's yeah, what yeah. you're saying right Dylan? I, I think what we're trying to find is a balance here now it's totally, like even totally. 10 or 20 when i first got into the workforce not I, appropriate y- you could be punched by your supervisor not appropriate or, or choked right uh that's not good yeah and you know i was uh you know infamously terminated for being in the office on vacation you know Mm -hmm. Uh, so you don't want that kind of work environment either but uh magda and benny are just driving me up a wall 85 pots Mm. uh i have uh you oh yeah you guys have both been fired did you know a little confession over here i've never been fired from a job in my entire life oh your medal's in the mail Thank you. <laughs> Talk about the episode. Really cool, Pat. Huh. No, I did love Getsad and and Joe talking about. And I'm not a big 
Joe Rogan guy anymore, but God such such a lovely guy, and he was talking about books being. Dylan's the, the biggest Joe Rogan guy. He's got he's got the JRE tattoo on his back. Uh, Gad was talking about how <laughs> books are fossils of our creativity. Such a beautiful way of putting that, fossilizing our connection to one another. Oh, I see. That's so beautiful. So are our podcasts. So um, we last left off. Ryan was pizza ratting all over the place. Uh, he was spitting light beer in a rage at Toomey, who in turn transformed into a, what a version of herself. This is, you know, she's she's gone Super Saiyan. I love this Toomey. Suck my dick. Suck my dick. Well, Ryan made an egregious mistake. Like Toomey said, he went against the, the only kind hand he had. Yes. Uh, when you go against that, then you are left with no protection. It's just like Marty Mush dating Rhea and and going against Dave and Big Cat, you know? Because APN, we would like to say strong stance, we're Team Hank. Right, guys? <laughs> Nick, I mean, Pat, are you Team Hank? Uh, if you're Milton Strong, you're Team Hank. Are I'm, you Milton Strong? Now, you guys accuse me of not listening, and, and that accusation is very apt. I don't listen. Has this been mentioned before? Yes. Okay. And I I, we've directly asked you numerous times mm. what team you're on. Look at you sucking down that column. Do you got another one for me over there? Uh, there is. I, a, I got oh, one he, more, oh. but I kind of think that it's yours. Yeah, I mean, you can have it. No, if you want. no, it's, no, no. You can have give it. Give it to him. Give it to him. You can have it. I'm just really enjoying this. <laughs> it's magnificent, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, Team Hank, APN. Yep. Defend the wall. So but yeah, egregious mistake by Ryan biting the hand that feeds him and would protect him. That was well, speaking, so Magna. Well, well, he has yeah, the hand that was rubbing his back, the, the fingers through his hair. And I don't like that version of Toomey. I, that's bad. I like the suck my dick, uh, go toil away in your stainless steel prison version of Toomey. <laughs> uh, so Asia is in the midst of a breakdown because of what Ryan and Magda said about her. I get that she's hurt, but this is kind of uh, exhibit, you know, ZC of you know she's just i don't know that she's cut out for it i mean who gives a fuck what ryan if says about you why are a, you crying yeah it's more it's magna too it's if you're in a position of power you have to have tough skin kid also uh you do know you're down in the dumps uh if bertini is the one uh yeah. cheering you up she's just basically like at least you're not me yeah um magda has some moment of realization but i don't think it's going to take so let's move on to ball of uh snakes type stuff but not really um that's oh, a ball of snakes oh i thought you were making that noise wow no i did it you see how quick <clears throat> that well you should that, that was really fast it, it, well guy because i had it written down too holy smokes Great um lines. the party doesn't get started until the entertainment director shows up to the hot tub time yeah so let's talk about and ryan ball of leaves snakes. yeah um right. this is not anywhere near where we need it to be because it's down under. I think a litmus test for a well-casted season of this show is what they do in and around a jacuzzi. And that's not just sexual. I'm not trying to be perv-perv. The jacuzzi is an important hub for the sea rats. They smoke cigs there. They fight there. They break glass there. They suck and they fuck there. And The hot hub. Yes, exactly. And a cast... This cast is not making good use of this most important watering mm -hmm. hole. Can, I, I, what I think happened here is they thought they had the perfect cast, Comedia Del Andy. Uh, they thought Jamie was going to be their dog yeah. who was going to mm -hmm. be fucking stews. Mm -hmm. But that, that whole issue, he was hitting on Magda Night One, was worried about looking like a sleaze, backed off, called everybody ugly, dried him up. Yeah. It really ruined the Thank season. Thank God he didn't come off as a sleaze. And I think the master plan of what uh, the the casting producers thought was going to happen. It all fell apart. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, something interesting about Australia, and I dealt with a lot of Australians. I think I mentioned this before. In the tour business, they're the third most... Uh, we listen. Uh, they, they come to America quite a bit. So I got to interact with a lot of Australians. They you got to fuck a like, bunch. Uh, yeah, I have sex with a bunch of them. But mainly, this point I'm about to make is because I watch a lot of reality TV. A lot of reality shows come out of Australia. And all of them show that pretty much the 20 types that are there are Florida trash. Like, they're that version of Florida. Right, right, They got right. all the neck tattoos. They're all whored up. 
uh, missed opportunity here to not uh, sure. dig into that uh, that hopper and pull out some. some there of are that. plenty of misfit toys walking around that prison in the middle of the. Very ocean. eloquent, right? You said it way better than me. <laughs> I do think uh, Bravo slash Peacock, though that's kind of a misstep. We could have had more neck tats. Uh, they are doing somewhat of a good job with casting because what you need is true sea rats, not these ones we get after who have been on a couple of seasons with a polish like Eddie. They got rid of Eddie. Right. Did you see the yes. news? Yeah. And he was pissed. He says they weren't even paying him well. Yeah, which, like, obviously, Eddie, that's the thing. You can get marginally more than the other sea rats, but if you ask for a real salary... You're uh, done. You're done. We'll get someone new. Not to mention, you just botched a claim of racism mm. directly to you as the leader of the deck crew, so... Just a bad time to ask for a raise. You've got no leverage. Also, yeah, buddy. And you're showing up to this show with a fucking girlfriend, you Snorefest? Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of Snorefest, we've got Jamie and Culver. Culver. Now, Jamie, I like that take. From the look of him, you would think that he was going to be, you know, the Comedia del Andy douchebag of the cast. <coughs> but he, as we mentioned, has the protector element to him. Um mm. So he really is just um, a safety warrior and also kind of a gross chauvinist not in like that he's like hooking up with he's, people but he's, he's complicated just, he's disgusted by these women and he i don't know he's not afraid to show it but then we've got culver who is i mean be a gentleman man Britt wants a toasty what are you doing and it's helped out by their direct supervisor trying to mash their heads together once sure. again i think at ross dress for less right i don't think that goes over the next day maritime law mm. um so, also not a quick, okay at Sports Authority. Yeah. Ahoy, mateys. As Dylan would say, it's time to get sexy. That's right. Today's episode is brought to you by Dame Products. You know you got to keep it spicy in the bedroom. Otherwise, things are going to get stale. You guys are going to start fighting, get a divorce, and mess up your kids permanently. But if you, and if you don't have kids, you still need to spice it up because you'll never get to the point if you have kids without Dame products. Let me recommend their most iconic product, Eva. I think it's a little play on words of Eve. It's their it's their first and most iconic product, the the first hands-free couples vibrator designed to enhance your partner play without getting in the way. What a tagline. They're poets and they didn't even know it. I think they did know it and rhymed intentionally. But think about that. I mean, everybody loves a little something that vibrates, but the problem is you normally need to use your hands and then your hands aren't free to do other stuff. People like to be touched with their hands and, and with that thing, but if you're if you're holding that thing, the point is you got to get this hands-free vibrator. And how you get it is go to dameproducts.com and use pro promo code below deck for 15% off your first order. That's promo code below deck to get 15% off your order at dameproducts.com. That's right. Keep it spicy, everyone. Eva, hands-free, most iconic. They also have a suction vibrator designed to get you there fast. Massage oil. Top three favorite oil. I call it sex oil, but we'll call it massage oil. It's sex oil. Today's episode is also brought to you by Magic Mind, literally my favorite sponsor and yours. Uh, you guys know it. It's the anti-procrastination drink. It's going to help you knock stuff off your to-do list rather than see your to-do list grow. That's what I did last week. But today, it's Monday. I had my Magic Mind, and I'm just knocking stuff off right and left. Uh, it's a it's a once daily shot. It's a matcha based drink. Matcha's hot right now. You're probably getting matcha green drinks from some juice place. Get this once daily shot that has uh, matcha and 11 other natural ingredients. We're talking echinacea, ashwagandha, and other natural ingredients. It has a nice 30 milligrams of caffeine. That's not going to give you that anxiety that too much coffee does. Uh, it's going to be give you, along with those natural ingredients, it's really the alchemy of all of them combined. That's why you're not going to get this same type of focus in any other product. But those 12 natural ingredients, like those Captain Planet kids with their powers combined are going to give you a nice zen focus hum throughout the day. So go to magicmind.co, use promo code JASON to prove you're a below deck under down under fan more than below deck med. Uh, go to magicmind.co, use promo code JASON for 20% off. That's magicmind.co, use promo code JASON for 25% off. Uh, the night ends with de a debaucherous consumption of food. Bertini is head-butting watermelon. She's speaking to her ramen, so it's time to shut it down. You know, on a drunken night where fucking's supposed to happen and it doesn't, you only have one other option, and that's just to fill your fucking pie hole with right. empty carbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's it, there's really just I always knew uh, when I when I was uh, gonna be hanging out with a girl. If she, uh, I was like, oh, I'm starving. Can we uh, go through a drive-through or something like that? I'd be like, oh, there won't be sex tonight. Remember, right, right, right. Remember your father used to say that, Tom? Uh, son, if you're headed home from the bar with that little lady and she asks you to stop at yeah, yeah, uh, Jack yeah. in the Box to order a milkshake and fries, you're not going to see her naked, dear. You're going to want to get the cheesy gordita crutch after. <laughs> so. Uh, Jamie the Buzzkill tells everyone up at 9.30 a.m. and we get some shut-eye. Now, that shut-eye will be cut two hours short because Captain wakes and sees the glass and the cigs and the old lobster is still on his hands and he's pissed off. Never has there been a more appropriate name for an area than the cruise mess. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It Uh, is a mess down there. Hey, Don, I'm going to grab that other claw. I mean, uh... Okay. If Salerita, I'll even split it with you. There's one one rule. Um, please don't, don't call them it. claws. <laughs> it's kind of like that's the one clause. No, like like what, what is that called? The no clause clause. No no no. What is that called when um, when something becomes synonymous with the product? Uh, a proprietary eponym. Proprietary eponym. Please do not use claws. Nothing gets me. It gives me a dopamine hit quite like getting a trivia question right. Mm-hmm. Do you guys want to go to bar trivia? Um, I'll put you no, on my back. because there are. What are you talking about? Put put us on your back. I, I, I'm kidding. You, there are things that no one, you know you great nothing tri- about. And I there know. are things that I know nothing about. I've sat in these trivia nights and I've just been like, who the fuck knows the answer to this fucking question? What oh, are we yeah. doing here? I, I quickly get humbled at a real trivia night. I, I'll <laughs> say that. I'll say that. Uh, so J-Man flames his deck crew and gives uh, Jamie the Lord of the Flies type choice pick the person who will be punished and we learned last week that he does have that protector complex that the crew didn't know about so he does fall on the sword now the a mo- little late though I think right in this moment is when he should have exercised right. that extreme ownership that would have been a dope baller move yeah and then he would had a meeting with his team be like I don't care who did it but let's not have it happen again Jocko would have given him a B minus for this <laughs> yeah. maybe even a C plus yeah or pass. maybe even lower yeah fat pass or fail with Jocko yeah, uh, yeah, this, yeah. this was a fail he doesn't have time for uh, the, the, the rubric or what wrong is so uh, the most most annoying thing about this is Benny handing out ethics tickets to his co-workers in his talking heads. He's like, come on, Culver, own up to this. Hey, Benny, why don't you own up to killing your parents and leave people alone, okay? You little fucking bitch. It may- Sorry, you know what, bleep that. That's too nasty, but he just, he really pisses me off. And I mean, it's just insane that he's able to gloss over that. It's like, oh, one guy left trash on board. One guy killed both of his parents. You slaughtered your parents. What are we talking about here? Wow. Lesser of two evils. These seas are filled with uh, murderers. A hundred percent. Hey, uh, we, did we get to the part where uh, that Captain uh, Hot Stuff uh, gives him uh, a verbal, a verbal warning? Uh, I'll get there in a sec. Okay. But so first, Toomey gives Mag the rundown on the task that she will surely fuck up soon, and then we get to this meeting with Cap. Yes. Now I love Jamie's reasoning for not telling the captain that it was Culver. He's just fucking hates Benny. He's like, I'm not going to throw Cul- Culver hasn't fucked up at all. Benny's been fucking up constantly. Um, I'm not throwing Culver under the bus. And that is when cap gives him the verbal warning next time. Well, I'm going to have to give written. you your first verbal warning. Devil secret probation, mate. <laughs> I was like, where are these fucking demerits? For all the cocks being swung in people's faces. Right. I guess we don't have a problem with that, but a verbal warning for not taking the trash out. And it did seem like a very arbitrary made up at the spot scale. Like you said, what comes next? We got the probation. It reminded me of this scene from The Office. Oh, what's this? That is a demerit. Jim Halpert, tardiness. Oh, I love it already. You've got to learn, Jim. You are second in command, but that does not put you above the law. Oh, I understand. And I also have lots of questions, like what does a demerit mean? Let's put it this way. You do not want to receive three of those. Lay it on me. Three demerits, and you'll receive a citation. Now that (laughs) sounds serious. Oh, it is serious. Five citations, and you're looking at a violation. Four of those, and you'll receive a verbal warning. Keep it up, and you're looking at a written warning. Two of those... 
that'll land you in a world of hurt. In the form of a disciplinary review written up by me and placed on the desk of my immediate superior. Which would, <laughs> which would be me. So if, if we're... If, Hot Captain's going off Dwight's scale. He's already received three demerits, five citations, yeah. and four, four violations. violations. Yeah, no, I mean, he has been fucking up left and right. Uh, Bertini, after... That was only 50 seconds. It seemed like an absolute eternity. No, no, no. Oh, dude, I anytime I can, I can drink in a little office, I'm a... I'm a happy camper. The soothing <clears throat> office sound. The so I was going to mention it, but I didn't want to speak right when the clip started. Uh, so, Bertini, uh, having propositioned Culver for uh, hot sex the night before, <laughs> is curious about what's going to happen next. And I was thinking, I mean, everybody knows you're going to be homeless together. You'll you'll fuck each other a couple times in the four corners, and it'll be a blast. Mm. You'll eat beans and canned ravioli. And have a lot of water jugs all over the place, and you'll just be fucking each other, uh, you know, crazy. Don't, you'll be bums. Don't forget beans, canned ravioli, and other canned food. Yeah, yeah, tuna, a lot of tuna. But enough Too about much that. Tuna. We got to talk about the big one. It's the big sit down. It's the big meeting. It is the Pratt Fred Shake meeting. Dun, 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 dun. Our primaries. These guys are weird. Weirdos. Yeah, they're weird. Uh, Reverend Jackson, I called that, uh, that dweeb, that weird looking one. Uh, he's, of course, referring like to Reverend Jackson. Uh, co primary Carlton Dickerson <clears throat> yeah. and co primary Melina Musumet. Mechi, uh, from I think you nailed that. I think so, too. S uh, from Sydney, uh, N New South Wales. Carlton Dickerson and Millennium Masusa much yeah. uh, are pr uh, co-primaries who are strangers to fir uh, no strangers to first-class treatment. Melina is a senior accounts executive, and Carlton is the founder of a successful financial software company who moonlights as a musician. Mm. He even released an album of Christmas songs, which we might be hearing in a bit. Did you Originally from Savannah, Georgia, <laughs> <laughs> Carlton will be ce celebrating his 20th year of living down under while cruising through the Wit Sundays for the first time. Right. Joining Carlton and Melina will be a few of their friends. Jason is a former acrobat who runs a thriving workwear company. Is that the guy that got a foot cramp and started yelling for help? Help! I I how the mighty have fallen if it were uh, him. Acrobats I don't, think... don't wear T-shirts in bodies of water. Yeah. I think it's a rule. I, I, if that guy died, I'd hope they put that in his obituary. <laughs> died of a leg cramp. Foot. Right. I, if that happens to me, I drown and die. I'm, you know, you're not going to see me screaming for help like an <laughs> If idiot. that happens to you, you tread for a couple minutes. It does. It does. Well, it, had it's cramp. It's though. very painful. You tread with one one leg, and you. I, I also think he had a life vest on. So we'll get there. But also, <laughs> my God. But also, failing to prepare. That means he didn't drink enough water on the lead up. Again, it's his fault. He should have drowned. They should have let him. I've <laughs> thrown up in my own snorkel before. Uh, thrown up, sucked it back in. Choppy waters. I didn't cry for help. I wanted to, but I didn't. Jason's wife, Cheryl, works in IT and expects nothing less than a seven-star experience. Well, I think she's going to be a little disappointed. These people get their stars so fucked up. Five Michelin, seven stars. It's just uh, you're all out of whack. Oh, yeah, 62 stars on our flag or something. Rounding out the charter are... are uh, you got this. I think I got an autocorrect error because it's lowercase. Vanita, yeah. an entrepreneur and luxury traveler. Peter, who works in insurance. And Richard, a hotel venue, man uh, hotel venue manager who will be extremely focused on the service. This group of workaholic guests are looking forward to being pampered and having the trip of a lifetime. They have high expectations and disturbing palates. They are looking for... They're looking you got this. forward to dining and events <laughs> that will make this charter they will a uh, charter they will never forget. Yeah. And let's listen to some of Carlton's Carlton's music. Now he does what? Uh, uh I don't know, but he did a Christmas album. He I think he fancied himself like a Frank Sinatra type. Any candy cane. Ooh. Sounds like the mic is in the back of the room. This is posted on YouTube five years ago and has 76 views. 
All right, we're done. All right, yeah, okay. definitely done. And uh, I actually missed, uh, I forgot, I, I didn't write down if they no- said what they wanted to do. <laughs> they're they're going to go snorkeling. Uh, that concludes the preference sheet. Man, these guys are weird. He's a weird guy. These are weirdos. Uh, all right. Reverend so, Jackson is what we will refer to him going yes. forward. I agree. Aisha goes on a uh, tour of harm here. Uh, she sits down with Magda first. Um, and they have a really productive chat. And Magda has a stunning realization, kind of like this mental wellness epiphany, that she was projecting onto Aisha the resentment she had for her last boss, who, once again, did not like Magda because Magda was just too Pretty. attractive. Yeah. Well, she was at her uh, other boss was apparently a, a fellow model. Yeah, you know, it gets really <clears throat> competitive between... Uh, failed models or models that aren't models who are sea rats working on boats. That field is very, very... You know, I I have a question. Maybe if we ever get the chance to talk to Magna, I'll ask her this. If you're such a successful model, why are there only two photos of your modeling? Yeah, so I love when she says that she's a model, right? Because we cut to pictures of her in white polos working on boats, pictures that she took for her Instagram. Someone took it for you. And then, um, like, two the, photos from uh, one shoot. Two, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, There's a low bar to being a model nowadays. All you need is some guy DM you on Instagram, be like, oh, I want to shoot some pictures of you. You go out, you take some pictures by the beach, he tries to fuck you, and then you never see those pictures. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's just 100% what happens. Oh, you want to... Uh, hey, I was, do you... Uh, have you ever thought about uh, <clears throat> modeling nude? I no. take beautiful pictures. I just love the female body. Is it a paying gig? Oh, you, you, you can use it for your portfolio. I'll pay for your gas to get out there. Yeah, but Deal. but no, this is really for exposure for you. It's for your exposure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was in Thailand, I, I just got a divorce. So <laughs> I was just wondering if you could come take some pics with at me. a studio. No, my apartment. It's All a right. studio. I'm glad you made it. Before we get started, I'm just going to take out my robe. Yeah. So I take oh, don't, don't mind my dick. I can't take pictures not erect. This is normal. Don't mind that I have a throbbing heart on right now. <laughs> Again. Just be a professional. That's how I take pictures. If you want to make it in this industry. <laughs> when I uh, was in Thailand a few years ago, I went to a place called James Bond Island. Yeah. Very beautiful uh, views. There were two girls. I was there for a total of an hour. These girls brought a bunch of different outfits, and they kept swapping them and taking pictures of each other. Like it basically sure. doing a magna yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. models now a word from our sponsor better help in my past i've had a lot of stuff to do and sometimes that can be overwhelming for people uh, i finally reached the conclusion that the problem was i was worrying about all the things i had to do rather than what i needed to do to get them done uh, a solution rather than focusing on the problem make an action plan And it took me a while to get to this point, and I think I would have found it a lot sooner had I talked to a licensed therapist at betterhelp.com slash below deck. Had I done that, I could have got 10% off my first month using promo code below deck at betterhelp.com slash below deck, but I haven't done it yet. Uh, And honestly, if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. You can get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief sur- survey and switch therapists at any time just in case you don't like the person that you ended up talking about. They're always going to be licensed, but sometimes you got to find the right vibe. Uh, so when you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash below deck today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, betterhelp.com slash below deck for 10% off your first month. Go get help. So um, Benny's not happy. Who cares? Let's get to Pizza Rat and Asia. So she confronts him about behaving like a sewer human, and then he gets defensive straight from the jump. I know who t- I know who told you. No, that's not the point. You called me. You're saying horrible things. Hey, I know exactly who fucking gave you that inside scoop. Yeah. She did a great job not falling for those red herrings and stayed yes. on point. She's like, no, you piece of shit. I don't like you talking about me. I don't care who you're from. I love well, You I, can tell the person that told you all that stuff. They didn't get it completely right. Yeah, I said a positive thing about you. <laughs> no, but I love it. He did, that, though. That didn't get back to her. That is the problem with telephone. Well, it's it telephone. was it was 
a the overall it was a disingenuous is. half thought that he threw out really quickly he saw that he like looked at the camera right before it. yeah like, oh. i like her as a person <laughs> but what a lazy <laughs> cunt huh um, but I do love that Aisha is going around staring this mutiny of losers in the face because it, I don't know. It just kind of reminds me of, you know, the, the end of Godfather where Michael's going around kind of facing down his the people that are causing the Corleone family uh, issues. It's kind of like what Aisha did. Yeah. But she's just not shooting people in the face. Right. She wasn't even going to join this season. But uh, every time she's out, they pull her back in. So Ryan says something about being stressed leads to showing guilt. Question mark, question mark, question mark. He said, I tend not to get stressed, even if it is my fault. The second you show the stress, you admit guilt. He's a piece of shit. Oh, my God. He also t- is overjoyed. Just a with- broken outlook on life. Oh, this guy, he, do you see how the sickening joy he took out of staring at dead baby k- kangaroos? Okay, so yeah, let's get there. Um, unfortunately, because of the PSYOP waged on the world by the Chinese and by Bill and Melinda Gates, they just can't fire the guy. There's no one who's come out of quarantine that is ready to do this. So he knows he's under the microscope, so he's going to chill out, which his version... What's PSYOP? I don't remember PSYOP. His version of this is shoving baby kangaroo carcasses in people's faces and laughing like it, it everything about him is either sad disgusting anger inducing just a just a zero out of 10 human being this is him being like nice and funny and it's just weird i will talk to him dylan i'm gonna promise to deliver that interview um so meanwhile meanwhile Jamie uh, sets permanent rolls. Ryan boils some crab. And Aisha slams some whipped cream down before the guests arrive. She's probably taking whippets. And we get a tour of the boat. Thank God. And the guests ask for oysters and for the preparation to surprise them. Do not worry. Fear not. Ryan's got this. A bed of arugula is laid on a plate. The oysters are shucked and lemon wedges are crudely cut and laid on the arugula there is no mignonette there wasn't a a thought of cooking them there was no warm preparation a million miles from this uh from this boat there is not even ketchup and horseradish stirred together it is a small display of this man's gross and honestly dangerous negligence that (laughs) this was so lazy a presentation of oysters he should have put grenadine on him that would have been a huge surprise a huge surprise um and i love the way that yeah what's up i well i'm also glad she corrected herself because he also did a achieve- he surprised her she wants something fancy he definitely surprised her he got she, she got bottom of the barrel that's I a surprise s- i saw that arugula <laughs> come out and i was like oh my fucking god that I, I don't that kind of presentation is like I don't know if Sizzler started doing oysters <laughs> like it, it's just the tackiest most thoughtless I'll oh, just chuck some ar- arugula it's so funny if I would have been served that I'd be like oh my god this is so fancy how do I how do I eat this what do I do with it <laughs> now the the charter guest was referring it to it as natural presentation was that was is that such a thing as when it's prepared in such a simpleton way that it's referred to as natural or was that in fact a slight at him um natural is an incorrect word for classic preparation okay uh classic preparation is oyster and it's the best presentation i'm not into like cooked oysters um but it's served with a little bit more accoutrement than just what well, and it's definitely never served on a oh a bed of peppered uh spinach that that's just (laughs) such a wildly bad direction to take um but it's usually accompanied with some type of mignonette which is pretty simple to make it's vinegar and shallots and cocktail sauce um don't be afraid to use horseradish it's horseradish and ketchup that's tartar sauce right no definitely not and um then you you know put some fresh grated horseradish and then cut the lemons don't cut them crudely make sure the seeds are removed it's a very very simple thing but you just have to take some time and do it he pulled out a bag of arugula (laughs) 
<laughs> it's just so <laughs> wild. And then slap some kimchi on it later. I mean, this guy just sucks. So um, moving on. I love the way that this woman told Aisha that what the chef had done had made her vacation worse. Um, be honest, but be polite. And it wasn't necessarily polite, but it's Ryan, so stab him. I don't care. Uh, he's told of the criticism, and you can see the switch appear in his brain. On is use guys and fuck use guys, and off is normal human being. Take a breath. Uh, luckily, he is a changed man, and you can see that in his lunch, which is once again crab, that the guests have to harvest themselves, but this time it's seasoned with something. Um, shellfish that has to be cracked by the guests is his beef cheeks. He's served it five, six times now. We're on episode 11. So the co-primary slams her fucking head into the roof of the tender, and we move on to snorkeling. Uh, the guests are having a blast, and then we get to the foot cramp. There is a man in a t-shirt in the water, and he yells help probably six or seven times. Now, there are varied responses to this from the crew on the tender. Should we um, help that guy? <laughs> is he saying help? Is he with us? I'm pretty sure he's saying help. Hmm. Yeah, I think he just said help. But luckily, Jamie is trained for this. He's not going to fish another Chinese boy out of a pool, okay? Um, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Hopefully this was one night that Jamie could, his head could hit that pillow and rest, you know, at peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was probably the Chinese kid pulling him under. All right. The ghost. So, uh, and also Jamie was so confused because he's like, why is that guy yelling out more Kobe Calais songs? <coughs> mm. You know, I would never laugh at that, but I love that. Help. I need somebody help, not just anybody. Is that a Colby Callier song? <laughs> Thanks. Back in the USS, back in the USSR, is that Colby Callier? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... um. We spoke about it. This and then he, and then, then he gets out there. And the guy's like, I want to hold your hand. He's like, this guy fucking loves Colby Clay. And he just starts talking about blackbirds. Um, all right. So. He saved. <laughs> he saved. I, Pat, take it easy. Okay. <laughs> We're having fun with the Beatles. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so a lot of things happen. Um, after the foot cramp, we've covered it. It's a pathetic display of masculinity. The man is elevating his foot on a bag of ice. I mean, it's just. <laughs> I'm a pussy, and this guy makes me look like Jocko. This isn't just coming from us. The pri cold primary, Molina, she notes at some point, she says, uh, said, how'd it go? She said, uh, it was pretty fun, except uh, that guy died. It'd be pretty embarrassing <laughs> for me. She immediately sold him down the river the second they returned on the tender. Hey, Molina, how was your uh, vacation? Oh, it was am amazing, except for someone fucking drowning. It kind of sucked after that. Yeah, it <laughs> brought it down to about a seven, but we still had a good time. <laughs> the crew couldn't even like look us in the eye. It felt so stupid. <laughs> Cold-blooded. <laughs> and now we have to plan a funeral. Uh, all right, so a lot of things happen after this. Dare I say, meanwhile, um, Benny slams the tender into full speed and starts taking pictures uh, off the side of an unmanned vehicle. When <laughs> Jamie says, always drive the boat you're driving, Benny says he's trying to create incompetencies. He's mm -hmm. manufacturing these demerits, these violations, and these disciplinary <laughs> actions. Um I, I don't know what to say about Benny. He is the worst version of the mental illness of the millennial. Yeah. He's his own worst enemy, really. Just keep your mouth shut and say sorry. I'll do better. That's all you need to answer. And maybe don't kill your parents. Just or shut that. up. So Captain Jason is down in the galley for dinner. Ryan, being a changed man, says, it's fine. It's his boat, but he better get ready to start doing some fucking dishes. Mm-hmm. Yep, I guess it is his boat. You fucking psycho. Uh, first course is oysters again. We've got kimchi, yuzu, and shiso. Shiso horny. You know, <clears throat> looked fine. Next course is kangaroo, red wine reduction, sweet potato puree, and chervil. Again, the the food looked f it looked fine tonight. He 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 realized that he is under the microscope, and he turned it up to a four. 
uh, with a cooked red meat, a red wine reduction, and sweet potato puree, just blowing the doors off the place. But the, the issue that I had with the service was that it was so fucking bizarre with Culver doing this no. crocodile Dundee thing. Um, it would be like if we went to France and they found out that we were from Los Angeles and they came to the table and they were like, What's up, guys? We've got a coat to both for you. Hope you guys enjoy. We'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah. But he, they want, it was an Australian-themed dinner. Yeah, but I, I still feel like the campiness of this. It's, I, I find it inappropriate. It annoyed me as well. If, if I was paying for this, I would have said, uh, please do not have that gentleman come back to our table. <laughs> uh, but <go> Politely. <laughs> how, how about one of the young, beautiful women that are, have been serving us? Hi, I would can we ask you something real quick? Please do not have that gentleman come back to the table. Uh, you, going back to Ryan stepping up his game just a bit tonight. Right. Uh, that's what rats... Be they yes. pizza or <laughs> sewer are known to do. Survival, yes. self-preservation. Yep. He will do just the bare minimum to yep. stay on this boat, but unfortunately his days are numbered. We hope. Uh, so four pots. Benny tells Britt that he wants her to do the fishing uh, just once so she can experience it. He is recommending that the, the charter guests stay take advantage two in the morning. of yeah. this feature. Um, Dick move. I, I hate this human being. I really, really hate. And, and it's not like Ryan, like I think he can grow out of this. Um, he's had a tough time having slaughtered his parents. He's still dealing with that guilt. Um, Ryan is a broken human being. There's no chance of rehabbing him. I don't think, but Benny, it like, this is just such a nasty <coughs> fucking sniveling little thing to do. Like Brit didn't tell them to go out fishing. This doesn't exist. You got the wrong uh, short end of the stick. Why do you want to subject someone else to it? It's so fucking weird. Mm. So weird. Um, all right. So this drives Britt to go and rat on the person who has that protector element we know so well. And when Britt asks for his help, he says, no, figure it out. Um, <sighs> what a leader. What a leader. So Magda is getting the positive affirmation that Benny so craves. And we sleep to wake for the next day. Next night. We end with the four minutes of Benny and the jet ski stuff. Uh, just to recap it really quickly, um, Culver jumps on. He gets on the jet ski to put the crane, the hook on it. While he is still seated on the jet ski, Benny starts hiking it up. Uh, he's told to slow down and let Culver off the fucking jet ski. When the jet ski is brought up, Benny says, leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. And that sends Jamie to the crow's nest to speak to hot captain Jason. Now the problem for Jamie is that hot captain Jason has a There's bit of two a, sides to every story. He mate. has a bit of a soft spot for Benny. So I do not think <clears throat> that this is going to go the way Jamie wants it to go. And it makes me sad because Benny should be not only fired from the boat, but he should be thrown in jail for the uh, merciless execution of his parents. Hmm. Um, that's the end of the episode. I think that's it. That's the end of it. Uh, guys, jump in the comments. Let us know your favorite thing to put on oysters in the comments <laughs> below. We love you very much. We'll see you next week. I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Nick say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, Pat boy. Say I. goodbye. Bye-bye.